All right, my friends, welcome to episode 318, holy shit, of Prof and Dev Play Games. My name is Larry, the professor at Prof Plays Games on Twitter, entering his final week of the semester. I'm very, very excited to end strongly. And over there is Anthony the Dev at Summerspeak on Twitter. Uh, how's it going, man? Pretty good. I'm pretty sure the faculty that you're monitoring and everything are hell-bent on making this final week uh, quite the uh, obstacle course for you. Yeah, it's always difficult in the fall to stick the landing because there's there's a lot of reports that need to get in. Um, and just making sure everyone gets them in before everyone excitedly leaves for winter break. <laughs> and I'm left trying to count my reports to thinking, oh, no. I don't have this one. I really need it. <laughs> and they're gone for two weeks or, you know, six weeks or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so that's always fun. Um, man, I cannot believe it's almost the middle of December. This uh, month yeah. is flying by. It really is. Um, and I'm basically, I would say, I'm on a weird holiday break. I have a week back at work, but we're doing a game jam. Oh, you're doing a, a game jam? Yeah, it's a... System era game jam. Nice. So get to get to make a game in a week, which will be fun. Um, needs to be Astroneer themed, but uh, they wanted the studio management wanted to have been wanting to do this for a while, and they would really like to get into a, at least a cadence of at least once a year this time of year, just doing a week long game jam, so people can kind of just blow off some steam. Um, oh yeah, for sure. A, a little bit, but then the office is closed for two weeks. <laughs> So, oh, so it's kind of like a three week. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm working. I'm working next this this week, and it's going to be a blast. But it's not working on like my normal work stuff. It is literally just being able to, like, let's make an idea and let's make something. Let's go. Like that is cool. Unpleasant yeah, astroneer. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. My my infamy is has spread through the studio a little bit. Oh, um, with that game. Yeah, only because it, like people are talking about game jamming and stuff, and another ex pop capper there, she was like, you know, you should talk to you should talk to Anne. I mean, he did a game jam game and actually published it. Um, yeah, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> it's one of my wife's uh, favorite games. <laughs> really? Seriously, I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. It's great. Um, yeah, we played I that for hours. Still play. Me too. So does she. <laughs> um, but you can't. Um, yes, and we blame you because. Uh, should I don't have the source code for it myself, um, and I'm sure it still lives somewhere in PopCap, but no one knows probably what it is or how to compile or do anything with it anymore um, to update it. Well, I mean, it's only. I, I wonder eight. if I could, if I knew anybody there, I if they could get me the source code. Let's discuss surreptitious plans I could, offline. I could, up, I could theoretically <laughs> update it so it's on modern day iOS. I guess, I guess, but PopCap would own or EA whatever would own that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Boo. Yep. Boo. Well, anyways, if you can go back in time, please try unpleasant. Unpleasant. I should just make unpleasant pony. There you go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, fuck. Do what King did to you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh boy uh well speaking of games we are talking about games tonight we are talking about the game awards which just happened and many things won awards and there were some some cool reveals i think um, yeah actually the, they got good reveals yeah so do you want to dig into reveals or awards well let's do the awards first we don't have to go through everything no I, I do want to talk about <laughs> standout ones that are like that are that are cool and interesting, and maybe some that you're like, that's weird. Um, because there's a couple that's weird. Um, but what, uh, which ones excited you? That I were? cheered Kana, Bridge of Spirits, which for yeah. this podcast and this podcast only, I will say it the correct way Kana, Bridge of Spirits won best indie game and best debut indie game, which is exciting to me, and also maybe slightly, um, I don't know if upsetting is the right word, but some of the conversation I heard around um, Kena, win Kena, God damn it, Kena winning uh, best independent game is like, oh, it's an independent game, but it looks like a AAA game. Therefore, it's like better than the rest. And it's like, that's not true. <laughs> like, just because uh, the, the art style or whatever, the, the fucking CG, yeah. you know? Uh, it's actually a crazy thing. Um, whenever you say what's an indie game now, it's really hard to define. 
um, and actually think it's a category that probably needs to go away in some ways or be have clarity added to it because mm-hmm. Destiny is an independent game. God damn, yeah, that's right. <laughs> there are the, like they cut from Activision. Bungie owns it outright. Bungie is the only person they publish. They make it themselves. They are independent of a publisher. That's what the definition of indie has always been: was independent of publisher. Right. Um, self-publish. Yep. So, like, you're getting these weird, weird things that are like AAA games being made that aren't through big publishers anymore. Um, and it kind of blows up the, like, well, what's independent? Because a lot of people do think of independent as like the scrappy little like pixel, pixel art game. Games, yeah, exactly. Or uh, actually, Astroneer would have been an independent game. Um, right. Back in the day, like day, it's still independent, but at what? I don't know. It's a hard category to define. I will say. So, anyone getting their uh, getting upset that Kena is that how is it? Kena. Kena. Mm-hmm. Kena would win independent. I'd be like, yeah, it can. It looks really good, and independent studios can make really good looking games. Um. The tools are there. Yeah, and it's just, you know, I think you're right in terms of, like, what that means moving forward because I just, I'm not super stoked about the conversation that it's, like, all about how it looks because there are other yeah. games on that list. Death's Door, for example, I think mechanically is better than Kena, but Kena, yeah. you know, has that wow factor, I think. I, I, w- I would agree. Um, but I'm glad it won its two things. Me too. We're going to be up yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, I fucking love that game, man. So that 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 was the first thing that made me squeal. Um, how about you? Uh, first thing that made me squeal was Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, getting baby. the best ongoing and best community mm-hmm. support, like much deserved, uh, and really probably pretty meaningful for that team that that's where they are they are now after eleven years and a failed launch originally to be. So just praised at the moment. Um, but yeah, that made me really excited. And the other thing that made me really excited was Game of the Year. Th- uh, that, that it, that it, fuck me, that it takes two one? Yeah. Because? Nope. It's such a small little game compared to everything else that it was up against. It's like David versus Goliath, huh? Kind of. You don't expect a game like that. To, I expect that's great it got nominated, but... Whenever you go through the however many people in the press and whatever to do the judging, yeah, it doesn't seem like the game that shows up at the top um, when it's up against what it was Metroid Dread. Um, I have to look at all the stuff again, but it was up against big name games, um, and you just get this little tiny game uh, that seems to. Uh, be a little bit of a darling overall. I should probably play it at this point. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, uh, because my sometimes I'm looking for co op games with my wife that'd be kinda of fun and this would challenge her to do something play something a little different. Um but that it's getting all the accolades made me think, mm, maybe I should try it out. But the the buzz moving into game of the year was that it was gonna be Deathloop. Um that seemed like <laughs> the critical darling and then it won For whatever reason, yeah, that was the one that was weird to me. I I saw when it won best art direction. I I couldn't see it. Yeah. I never really understand the best art direction. Well, n- n- let me rephrase that. I understand best art direction. Art is so fucking subjective that I, I'm just... Yeah. It's hard to pick a horse, I guess. Sure. It just... To me, it felt a little... Because it was up against... Uh, um, some... I would say games that are more guess holistically better art directed in mm-hmm. some way they f- fit together better uh death loop its color palettes are fine its models are fine but it still kind of generally feels and looks like a shooter in yeah. a lot of ways. nothing mm-hmm. it doesn't stand out to me art- artistically yeah uh, it's co- very competent very well put together but best art direction i usually expect something that will to win that just that really stands out it's different super super high level polish or just something. And Deathloop was not that. Um, but yeah, it won that and be- best game direction. Yeah. 
Best art direction, best game direction. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, it was also up for best performance, the two of two of the main characters or the yep. two main characters, and it lost out to Maggie Robertson for Yep. Lady uh I forget the last name. Madrescu. Lady or D. Like yeah. Lady D. Uh big giant lady. That ever, <laughs> everyone everyone wanted to say mommy too. Um That's fitting. Um Yeah. Um, Genshin Impact won Best Mobile Game. Yeah, I figured that would probably happen overall. Um, I did like that Metroid Dread won Best Action Adventure. Um, yep. From what I understand, Bowser gave the speech. Doug at Bowser, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no one from Mercury Steam was there to give a speech. Maybe they didn't want to travel. Yeah, maybe. Well, I There's could, like video Spanish, people in. I believe. They're Spanish, yeah, exactly. But video in or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. Doug Bowser didn't yeah. make this game. <laughs> no. Um, I like to hear from the devs, but um, best narrative went to Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like another push for me to to pick that up probably around Easter time, I guess, when I've got time. Um, the like... score was fine. Near. Yep. That didn't surprise me. RPG Tales of Arise. Yep. Not yeah, surprising. Yeah, I figured that was worthwhile. Um. Best action yeah, overall, went to Returnal, which was nice. Yeah, good. Deserved it. And then the dumbest category ever was won by the game that's coming out the closest, obviously, Elden Ring. Most anticipated game. Yeah. And it should have been Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, whatever the fuck it is, but of yeah, course it's the, the one that's coming the out. The sequel, what do they call it? <laughs> the sequel the, to Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, You know, that makes sense because it's almost here, so people are hyped up for it, but... yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, the rest of the stuff I don't really have much to comment on. Um, no. But we got a lot of actually world premiere reveals of a lot of different type of games. And yeah. a lot of cool looking games. Yeah, do you want to dig into what you like on this list? Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll go through the list quickly and we can mm -hmm. uh, sync, sync up at the end. Homeworld 3. Love the Homeworld games. Uh, excited. I knew that one was being, a third one was in being made it was cool to see mm -hmm. at least a tr even a trailer to reinforce this is coming um monster hunter rise sunbreak i knew that was coming still cool to see new things from it um i'm not gonna say persona 4 arena ultimax <laughs> it's the, it's the fight game. whatever i don't it's a <laughs> game um yeah. i don't care about yep. the persona fighting games wonder woman looks pretty cool holy shit excited geez. for that yeah dude by monolith yep mm. dude. you know about uh 15 miles from where i live for some reason, I th I keep thinking they're in a different like, because they're in Canada, right? No, they're right. in Kirkland, Washington. Fuck! Wow, I am way off then. <laughs> they are in the home of Costco. <laughs> yes, they are. They're awesome. Very close to that. Please go uh, stand outside their windows and look inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it sounds cool, dude. Point. They know that, that I'm excited about that game. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alan Wake two. Mm -hmm. Pretty excited to see what how uh. Ribbity takes that. Yeah. Um, probably won't play it, but I'll watch other people play it. Horror <laughs> games, man. Won't do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Star Wars Eclipse. I was excited, very excited, and then I saw who was making it. <laughs> I've heard that so many times in the past couple of <laughs> that days. That I'm like, I guess I'll have to sit and wait and see. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I've done some more looking at it, and it's made, it's set in the new time period that they've been working with uh, in novels and comics, which is called the um, the High Republic. It's about 200 years before the main trilogy. And it's, I have, I've read two of the books and they're really good. And I, I like that they're, it's just an, like its own new time period that isn't tied to other things. They can just kind of tell their own stories really well. Uh, so it's sounds cool in that way. And then I have to deal with, uh, was it Quantic Dream? Yeah, David Cage. Dealing, and I just don't even know how that. I'm like, I don't know what a Star Wars game by made them by them even is, because they don't do action. They don't they don't do the things that I would equate with Star Wars. It is a weird choice. <laughs> yeah, um, dude, it's a weird choice. Um, what else? Final Fantasy VII remake on the PC. Yeah, That's and that came with the news. Either there or later, probably later, obviously, that their games on PC are going to be 70 bucks going forward. Yeah. 
And then that was removed from it was an Epic Game Store exclusive. Yep. Where Square has been doing stuff with Epic recently. Uh but then they had it up at seventy and then they pulled the listing down. Oh. Oh. As of today. Like it doesn't it, yeah. Uh, so we'll see if it stays at seventy or not. <laughs> damn. Um so yeah, we, met, were, we met PS4, sorry. <laughs> yeah, they were well, trying to price it at PS5 pricing. Yeah, or PS5, sorry. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. Clearly, it's not going to go over well for PC. Fuck, um, no. <laughs> uh, um, trying to think of other one. Uh, Nightingale looked really cool. That one I didn't uh, see. I don't know what that is. It is X bioware Edmonton Dragon Age folks. Oh. Doing a, like steampunkish co-op survival game mm. like you with like basically rifts to other planets or planes or something i don't know it looks it, it piqued my interest by who's making it and uh kind of a co-op-y survival steampunky like you have rifles and stuff like that so uh i'm curious what that becomes but uh, I hadn't heard of anything about it before. I think this was the first time anyone had seen anything of it. Right, so, yep, exactly. Um, pretty excited about that. Uh, Sonic Frontiers, which is Breath of the Wild Sonic. Um, it's going to be... I actually think that could be a lot of fun if they do that well. Boy, um, boy, I hope they do it well. <laughs> it's like, just think, well, just think about just like being Sonic, like being super fast, just flying through a giant open world like that. I think that like, could be cool. It could be cool. I do. <laughs> uh, it almost seemed like Sonic of the Colossus a little bit, like just his big yeah. enemies. Um, boy, the world looked empty. Obviously, it's just sure. you know, what's supposed to. You know, here's what the world looks like. But the promise of that seems pretty cool. Pretty cool. We'll see if they can actually deliver. Yeah. Uh, you skipped Beat Saber, Lady Gaga, by the way. <laughs> I did. I uh, played Beat Saber. It's cool. <sighs> it's so good. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it's her and like just a collection of her discography overall. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten gonna have some great songs on there then um, that are gonna be great for Beat Saber. I just love uh, seeing Beat Saber getting more stuff, especially because yeah. I have it on PSVR, which means I can't load in my own shit. <laughs> oh, yes, that's it's the yeah. best play on PC. I know. So, um, don't really care about Warhammer Space Marine Two. Space Marines are boring. Um, <laughs> the first game was fine. I just don't give a damn about playing space marine yeah so mm -hmm. uh dune spice wars new dune rts weren't they, for it. weren't they the like one of the original rts's first rts it's dune 2 yeah westwood, westwood who went on to make command and conquer after mm. um that was like one of their earliest games yeah and yeah it pioneered the the rts genre so that's exciting uh, yeah it is exciting uh, i mean it's so far out i have no clue if it will be good or not um I'm trying to think of other don't care don't care don't care <laughs> you didn't say anything about telltale's the expanse <laughs> oh wait did i miss that one where is that it's under there homeworld it is. 3 ah, yeah yes what i had briefly the... seen that oh and that's the star trek right uh and there's also star well, trek resurgence right resurgence that's, yeah. yeah that's the two telltale games mm -hmm. which is it telltale still i mean it's the name but that's okay. Got gutted. It got completely gutted. That's and then I'm like, it's not the same people anymore. I don't think. No, they're um, using the fucking name. And, and they got good the formula, so. uh, franchises to go off there. So I'm stoked about the expanse. Yeah. Um, um, Deck Nine is working on that. Um, so they're the ones who did the second uh, Life is Strange game. Okay. Something like Before the Storm or whatever. Okay. That was pretty well received. So uh, the fact that Deck Nine is part of that is uh, interesting to me. Um, makes me feel like okay, there's something here other than like these the shell of a company that has a Telltale name. Yeah. Um... But fuck, that's awesome for for James S A Corey. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to get look up if they're. If they're licensed from the TV show, if they're licensed from the novels, or they could just use all of it. No, it says it's based on the sci-fi television series, so they can use the likenesses of the cast. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Curious how that goes. 
because I like the TV series quite a bit, and I think they did a good job. But of course, the books have more. Oh yeah, more to pull from if yeah. they can. So. Yeah, and you know maybe if they made more games, but you know there's enough to pull off from the movie or but fucking show, yeah. and people. Yeah. I don't know if more people engage with the show than the books. It's probably. Let me see. We're in America. That's probably true. Um, yeah. Sadly, but. Um. Got to see some Halo TV series trailer. Yeah, that's uh, coming it to Paramount Plus. Good. And like, I, I should say, it looks good from a like VFX standpoint. Like, it doesn't look cheap to me. But I'm curious what the story is. Because I think it's going to probably have to change the story somewhat to be useful as a TV show. I'm not going to retell the, the base game straight up. So, and it, so. Yeah, like, is it this, um. Is it pre, pre the first game? Yeah, I don't know. I wish, you know, have, despite having played all five Halo games, I'm like, uh, what's the story again? <laughs> Brad's gonna kill you. Every time uh-huh. he hates it when I say that. I'm sorry, but it's true. Um, it's not, it's true. I don't. I know, I'm like, there's Master Chief, there's Cortana, there's the rings, they can destroy stuff in the galaxy, they're bad. There's the flood, mm-hmm. um, and then two you get to like team up with the alien dude. I don't remember the faction that he's from. Yeah, no. But you play as him, and I'm like, yeah, he's the big enemy faction. But then you learn that they're not completely awful. Right. You team up with them, and then in the third one you like beat the flood and save the universe. But not really. Psych. There's <laughs> four, five, and six where we got to introduce. <laughs> New enemies. Nailed, um, it. Nailed it. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. That's what I remember from these games. Um, you know, and not, that's not the shit on the lore. There's a bunch of lore. Uh, there's a bunch of, you know, comics, books, stories, stuff in the game, whatever, the the, the hollow deck things or whatever you find. Um, I don't know. Just, it's never... Bungie. Very good at lore. Not great at executing on it. Oh, lore. my God. Destiny. <laughs> Dude, those fucking cards, the grimoire. Like, dude, there's a lot of cool shit here, and it's not here. And the guy, what was his name? Seth something? Who wrote, yeah. um, oh my god, a fucking book that I love, that I'm blanking on the name of. It was excellent. Like, oh, you guys know how to write. It's just not in the game. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and then the last thing was this new game I hadn't heard of, Arc Raiders, which had like a... 80s VHS five mm-hmm. retro kind of thing going on, but it's also a like a survival co op exploration thing, which looked pretty cool. Um, I would totally, I'm sure I will end up playing that game just with people from work since it fits into the genre of game we make. Right. So, uh, but it looked cool. Had a, uh, I think they made it a good job making that trailer and getting a sense of scale, like you're taking off down like super giant robots um had a bit of like terminator vibe to it honestly future terminator so yeah i mean that was my take generally through the stuff that got shown there this list doesn't have i don't know the best or worst thing the sonic live action movie trailer too (sighs) you know you know that's the i haven't seen the first sonic movie but in general, the impressions were that it was better than it had any right to be. Um, I, I think know. everyone's just in on the joke with it. Yeah, maybe that's it. They're like, yeah, we know this isn't this isn't amazing, but we're going to ham it up for the camera and just have a good time. Mm-hmm. I mean, what the hell is Jim Carrey doing in that movie? Dude, I don't I don't fucking know. And uh, what is it? This one, you have uh, Idris Elba playing Knuckles. <laughs> like, how I mean, do you that... sign him up to voice... <laughs> That makes the most sense to me of anything. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, how do you pitch that? And you're like, so Sonic. Sonic, There's this Knuckles. He's kind of like this this bad. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's so (sighs) cool. Yeah, I don't know. know, To each their own. I don't want to show anyone's things that they like. No, I I haven't seen it. I kind of want to now just because it sounds like one of those movies that is – so bad that it's good yeah it, yeah it, it rides that line very well of like knowing what it is and being like yeah we're all in on the joke here this is kind of dumb but we're having a good time and that can be infectious to people watching it exactly so. we're gonna have fun and you will too just sit back and enjoy it 
Yeah. And you know the pandemic sucks, so here's some shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, I will say one last thing on the Game Awards overall. Uh, I think Keeley just totally flubbed his message on, like, industry behavior. Yeah. Just um, too vague. Yes, like, exactly. I appreciate that he was making a comment, but I'm like, God damn it, just call this shit out. Like, but I get he, it's such probably a, I, I don't know what the financial situation is, the game awards. Well, so the, I don't know how much of a tightrope he's walking on being like, I get to do this or I never get to do it again. Well, so. I, I, th I think it's true in like ex experiences that I've had with like, you know, high level people where they're unwilling to say things about other high level people because they're all in it together. And I feel like maybe, and I don't know, it's just fucking an assumption to be specific would put him on the line to be specific about somebody else in the future. Like maybe, you know, the bungee thing that just came out. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, then you're crossing off all the lists of the people who will eventually fund your shit. Like if you're very specific, then Activision Blizzard would be like, I'm never going to fund your shit again. Bye. Um, which is fine for me, but maybe not for him. Yeah. I don't, they they had in did they have anything in here? Did they fund them? No, this time no. Um, but they, they do have, have trailers in here. I don't know if I don't think they funded any of the categories. Well, Keeley said ahead of time they're not involved except for them being nominated for whatever award they were uh, nominated sure. for. But the person is still on the um, advisory committee, and yeah. I swear to God I'm not making this up. The guy who is the <laughs> person on the advisory committee is named Robert Costick. Um, instead of Bobby Kotick, it's Robert Kostick. <laughs> and I, I would like to believe that's a real person, but I don't fucking know. Um, so. Yeah, I, that's kind of where I'm generally at with it, but I felt like it was still kind of too vague and. Yes. Right. Um, Want which to, is unfortunate. You know, get credit for saying something, but don't get, you know, burned for saying anything, really. So. Yeah. Whatever. I, I always wonder, like, I don't know, like, whoever puts, this is a bad comparison, but, like, whoever puts on the Oscars, Mr. Oscar, doesn't host the Oscars and doesn't get himself into every single fucking, you know, whatever, um, announcement or segue or whatever. Yeah. Keeley's like, in everything. And I wonder if, I don't know, it'd be better if he would kind of like sit back a bit and let other people take over uh, the hosting duties. I know it's his baby, but geez. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, the Oscars are presented by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Right, so it's not one person. No, yeah, it's a whole. But, but think about DICE. DICE hired, you know, right lately it's been um, Greg Miller and... Um, yeah, they hire hosts, but Dice, uh, the Dice um, Awards are Academy of Arts and Sciences, or whatever. Sciences, yeah, they're another group. They just get different, you know, hosts. Right, but that's kind of what I mean. Like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Whatever, it's his At thing. Point, but... like, don't, don't host anymore. Like, or as much. Jeez, it just yeah, seems move, like move back to be managing the logistics of getting this thing going. Um, whatever deals he makes to get trailers there and stuff. But yeah, actually work more on the, as like the head of the Academy of game awards or whatever they yeah, want to call it. Right. Um, Oh, well good. Fun, yeah. fun stuff though. I was, you know, I was yeah. excited by the, like you said, it takes two was like, whoop, big surprise. Um, so yeah. it's kind of cool to be surprised. Yeah, no, that was very surprising. Um, God, I can't remember. I don't want to botch his name. Who made it? Oh, Joseph Ferris? Yeah. I love him. Fuck the Oscars! <laughs> yeah. Fuck the Oscars years ago. But then just him being on stage, he's... What was the thing? He's like... uh, Something about like having kids. Oh, yeah. You should have kids. They're, you should, they're worth it. Or they're great or whatever it was. You should, you should think of, think about that. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty great. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, didn't that game win best family game? Yes. That's a little weird. I haven't played it, but I mean, it's about a family. Uh <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They're like, we can give this 
category award to someone who's not Nintendo finally. Yay. Yay. Yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of Nintendo, this week I've, fuck, you know, it's just getting so close to the end of the semester, I've oh, very little time to play. I so wanted to play The Artful Escape, and I just didn't get any time to do it, but I got half an hour to play some more Metroid Dread. And I just got the Flash, Flash, Dash, Flash, Phase, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just highlighted more and more, there was a point where there was like an energy tank, and I went to get it, and I just fell through the floor. I was like, alright, that power is somewhere nearby then. <laughs> Uh, and then I found it pretty close by. And it's, um, again, just the, the design of that game, the thing you need that you don't have yet, you know it's somewhere, and it is pretty close, as opposed to half the map away or whatever. And that was it's just kind of cool how tightly packed it is. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm just God-fucking-loving that game. It is so good. And it's it's easy to pick up for half an hour and put back down, which is kind yep. of what I need right now. So that's great. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you've been working like crazy. Oh my uh, god. I uh, only played one thing. I played Final Fantasy fourteen in Walker. Two Screw comes. you, Polygon. <laughs> There's no reason that shouldn't be on your list and it should be top ten. God damn it. I finished the main story quest. I finished the story so far. Um they stuck the landing. It was great. It was thematically on point. Uh, It's as absurd as any other Final Fantasy game from, like, a scale standpoint. I love. Um, But it's very comprehensible, as opposed to many other Final Fantasy games. Oh, wow. Um, And, I mean, I've always talked about this game just not being cynical, and it's all about hope. Like, no, that's the theme. They, They brought it full, like, not even full circle, just, like, right up front at the end. It's like, I posted the quote in our Discord, like, the villain is basically saying uh, nihilism is uh, the way to salvation, (laughs) Um, and it's your characters being like, no, that's not the way. Like, yes, we suffer and have hardships, but we forge ahead, and that's what makes life better, is overcoming these things and being better because of them. Right. It's not the fact that none of this doesn't matter that we're going to die anyway. Um, like it goes there on a level of philosophy <laughs> in the end. Um, and it feels good. And you're like, this is amazing. Um, and yeah, I was in tears multiple times towards the end of it. There's a lot of emotions and they tied up the loose ends. They made previous expansions better from the writing in this one. No, oh, wow. like they changed context of certain things um and that's the thing where i'm like i don't think they had this game story arc planned out when they started a realm reborn eight years ago Mm -hmm. like not not in a like we know exactly how this is going um but i think it takes more talent the fact that they've made it feel like it has right like it felt like everything connected along the way all the dots are now connected when really they just look backwards and we're like fuck Let's let's, let's how, do we, some how do we connect these? And it shows that they care about the dots they put down before. Mm-hmm. Like they actually like, no, the writer is making this, know the shit that they wrote before and care about it. Right. They don't want to throw it out. They want to make everything make sense. And so they will sit until they crack that story. And they did. Um, because even this, I'm like, oh, the song that plays through the first cinematic trailer, it's called Answers, has a very different meaning now when I listen to the lyrics of that song. Mm. Like, it 100% means something very different than what I when I first heard it years ago. And that's incredible. And it's kind of like, that song is kind of like the guiding light of, like, where the story goes. Um, I, I can't keep enough praise on this game like 300 hours 310 hours i think for me to finish the whole thing god um, damn wow and it's an incredible journey an incredible story um the spectacle at the end is amazing like i said the scale just ramps up and up um and while there's queues and it's hard to get in once you're in the game i've never crashed while playing the game hmm. i haven't encountered any bugs that i've noticed i'm sure there's some but nothing that detracts from the experience and 
uh, I guess anyone that wants to skip, skip, like, I don't think you care about spoilers, but skip, like, 15 seconds ahead, because I'm just going to set up the scenario of the final big boss fight, which is you're having planets thrown at you while you ride on a platform on the back of a dragon. Dude, <laughs> that's so cool. Seven other players as you're like, and it looks gorgeous while you're doing it. Like, As... I, we, we succeeded, but I was like, I need to go watch a video of this where I can just, like, watch someone else playing it so I can just look at everything right. going on. Because um, it was incredible. The sound design was amazing. It felt really good. That's funny. When you were saying, like, that the, the, the um, I don't know what word you use, the stakes or something, like, just kept going up and up and up at the end, I was thinking, like, did you fight in space or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's so does cool. Final Fantasy go to space? Yes, it does. <laughs> it's done it before, and it does it again. Um, very, yeah. very cool. I mean, it's a JRPG. You have to defeat God at some point. Yes, of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a JRPG. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and they, they check that box off. I'm honestly, they probably checked that box off previously. But you, you fight more gods. Um, bigger gods. So, I loved it. Um, I finished that earlier in the week, and I just continued to play the game. There's just stuff to do after you you finish the game. A couple more dungeons that I played that were one, which was like crazy MC Escher dungeon. Oh like, wow! You're on walls and ceilings, doors open to different places. It's not like you can get lost. It's all like a linear path, but you're just your camera is just shifting to different perspectives. Very cool design, stairways rotating in and out in weird angles and you're running up them. Um, it was a very cool design. Um, that team is just on the top of their game right now. Um, and it shows with this expansion. Um, Dang, that's so cool. And I'm excited to see where it goes next because this story arc is very much over. But yeah, I can see, see pieces where they're setting up what the next story arc is. And I think the next four or five patches, how many there are going to be before the next expansion over the next like two and a half years are going to start sowing the seeds on what, what's next, what, what comes next? What does it mean to continue playing your character's story at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm excited to see how they manage that just from a design and narrative standpoint. So yeah, I high, high praise. They did it. They have made probably the best MMO ever at this point. Damn. I I definitely want to invest in the story, not to play the game, but to invest in the story. I've just gotten so hooked back into to fucking Critical Role, <laughs> which is <laughs> itself massive story. Yes. Um, that I'm not gonna jump ship, but I'm I'm very well, excited that exists. Um uh, yeah, and I just don't know how you're gonna get the story without playing it. Because yeah, I don't yeah. Because even the I'm looking at all the voice stuff, even at Endwalker, which has more voiced dialogue, there's so much of the story that's not voiced. It's just you reading dialogue. Well, the one that, and it's like, ah, one that I found. Maybe I linked it to you. It was like had a ton of just the 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 fucking whatever the text. text screens. Yeah. Um. So it'd be a lot of reading. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I I yeah. I don't know. I would love to experience it. The the way that you talk about it um makes me think this is something I have to experience in some way, even if it's like they make a manga and I read it or some shit, I don't know. Something. Yeah. I mean, there has to be something that just straight up spends a lot of time recapping some of the stuff, like a detailed recap. Yeah. Um, right. I don't know, though. Um, yeah, not a lot of people are going to have the time to go through this. Well, clearly a lot of people, a lot more people than they were expecting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh -huh. Um. But it's still, it's hard to tell someone, like, yeah, you're going to be playing for, like, 300 hours. Go. Like, it's a lot. Um, but they they decided to do it, and I feel, it feels great. Best best Final Fantasy story I've ever played. So cool. Um, yeah. Could it be my game of the year? Maybe. Well, stay tuned. Find out at the beginning of January. <laughs> but if I was Polygon, it can't be. Nope. No. Nope. Because I their rules say. That. It, 
I don't understand why it's not on there unless they just couldn't play it in time. That's what I think. Like it came out, it got delayed, so they're like, we're not gonna be able to do it in time because we do our, you know, a lot of the places do their conversations for game of the year, um, you know, beginning in December or whatever in November. Yeah. But their their guidelines specifically said anything published in 2021. I thought it did. That's exactly what they said, but I don't think that's true. Well, obviously not, because it would be somewhere in the top 50. Although they played Halo Infinite, they put it on there. But was that the multiplayer or the single player? I didn't pay attention. What makes Halo? No, they're talking about the single player. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's no excuse then. Maybe they got it earlier. I think there was a review embargo. I bet they had it at least a week or two early. Yeah. So they could play through it. But I know that the press didn't get in Walker until the day it released. They don't do um, press previews. Um, they don't just give press copies. They did like a community preview month, like a month and a half ago. Right. But that was very restricted in what you could play because guess what? No spoilers leaked on what the story was going to be. Pretty cool. Like nothing. You had no clue what was going to be in there until you started playing. Um but that has to be what happened with Polygon. They're, like, they're just like, we have the conversation. We couldn't play this game. So it gets kicked, which probably I'm like, does that mean it just doesn't even show up in next year's either? Because it just happens to be in this dead zone that you don't play games in. So I don't know. Me neither. But it's... A lot to consider. <laughs> I don't. Their list is bad, though. They have a fine list. I think it actually has a lot of very good games on it. Yeah, so. the, the top. Yeah, there's some surprises at the top that are. Yeah. Things that I've heard all year. They're like, yeah, I need to play that game. Yeah. Um, so Chicory, especially. Same. That mm, one. Yeah. That might be when I play with my daughter. She's asking to play Kina again. <laughs> Kina. Oh, geez. Sorry, sorry, Kina for this p- podcast. Um, which you know, it's great. Um, but I convinced her to go pivot to Paper Mario so we could finish that one because we're at the very, very end of Paper Mario. We've been at the very end for about eight months. <laughs> it's like, let me just, let's just do the final battle. Um, so hopefully we'll finish that this week because um, that's the other thing I played this week, obviously. That and, nice. Kina, that and Kina, which I don't, I've don't, i mentioned enough. So Yeah. Well, cool. cool. Well, that's episode 318, Prof and Dev Play Games. If you like our podcast, please rate us on your podcast service of choice. And we will be back next week, to kind of rounding out the year and seeing, I don't know, kind of playing through games, or at least attempting yeah. to uh, move toward game of the year. So, yep. Um, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. All right. Later, everyone. <laughs>